Every year, tens of thousands of Orthodox Christians travel from Egypt, from Syria, from Armenia, from Ethiopia, from Greece, from Russia, and from all over the world to participate in the miracle of Holy Fire ceremony. These days, the Israeli authorities control the flow of events on Holy Saturday before Easter Sunday. The Israeli police shut down almost the entire old city before sunrise. There are barricades everywhere, and absolutely no one comes and goes through their barricades. By 6 a.m., there are thousands of pilgrims waiting outside the Jaffa Gate, the New Gate, and many other gates. Many came thinking that they would just get there a few days before and then get up early on Saturday and make their way to the church. Most of these people will not even get into the old city. Each community who controls the church gets a limited number of tickets each year to give to the members of their church. Every year, there are people, even 70-year-old grandmothers, who spend the night in hidden parts of the church hoping to be inside the church for the ceremony. And every year, they're found by authorities, whether Israeli police or church officials, and escorted outside of the barricades. I have to say, I feel incredibly blessed to have been able to participate twice in the ceremony. I don't believe that it's because the Lord loves me more than other people who didn't get in. In my mind, God allowed it so that I could tell this story. Around 10 a.m., the Muslim key holder who holds the key to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre year-round, I'll talk about him later in the course, makes his way to the Armenian Patriarchate. On Holy Saturday every year, the Armenian Patriarch is given the key to the church. With the Muslim key holder, the Armenian Patriarch, as well as a lot of Armenian priests and pilgrims from Armenia, process from St. James Church to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Around 11 a.m., when the doors are opened, different communities begin cramming into the church, controlled as much as possible by the Israeli police who are present in the church and throughout the city. The Israeli police and the Muslim key holder enter the tomb of Christ and check for any sources of light, for matches or lighters or anything like that. After searching the tomb, they seal the doors to the edicule with beeswax, symbolizing the sealing of the tomb of Christ by the Roman guard. People continue to be herded like cattle into barricaded pens within the church. Each community gets a specific section. My friend Jeremy, who came with me to video the ceremony in 2017, said it felt like a boxing match where each country entered the church like a contestant. And now the Russians, the Syrians, the Egyptians. <laughs> the arrival of the Arab Christians is a special event. They enter banging drums and hyping everyone up. They chant, we are the Arab Christians. This we have been for centuries and this we shall be forevermore. Amen. It's incredibly moving. Seeing them in person and hearing their chants, I was struck with the feeling that these people have more of a claim on Christianity than I do. Yeshua of Nazareth looks more like them than he does me. I felt incredibly small and yet a part of a family that stretched back millennia and was more diverse than I can imagine. I'll include a link to a YouTube video below that is incredible. Watch the entire thing. At noon, the Greek Orthodox Patriarch enters the church, leading a cadre of Greek priests. The Patriarch and the priest process around the tomb three times. The Patriarch is then derobed and checked for any sources of fire. The beeswax seal is broken and the holy oil lamp is brought into the tomb and set on the bed where Christ was laid. The Patriarch receives four sets of 33 candles, representing the years of Christ's life and then enters the tomb where he recites a prayer that has been passed down to him through the centuries. Outside the edicule, the situation is somewhat tense. All the lights of the church are extinguished, and all the people are waiting in expectation. Many are praying, and occasionally shouting, Christos Anesti, which means Christ is risen, or the same exclamation in their own language. There are screams here and there when people see a flash of the blue light of Christ. The lighting of the lamp is different every year. Some years, the first sign that the lamp has been lit will be the cry of someone near the edicule who happened to see the lit lamp through a window of the edicule. Other years, the flash will be more manifest and the whole church will see the light descend on the tomb. There are many accounts of pilgrims whose candles spontaneously light up outside the tomb. When the light turns to fire on the lamp, 
the Greek patriarch lights his candles from the lamp and then lights the candles of the Armenian patriarch, who's the only other person in the tomb, although he stays in the antechamber. The Greek patriarch exits the tomb with his candles lit and the crowd erupts in elation. They all light their candles from his and the fire spreads through the church, outside the church to people in the streets, and then literally around the world. Candles lit by the fire are placed in special boxes and flown by emissaries to Greece and Russia and the US and then carried from church to church so that the fire truly spreads around the world. In 2017, the first year that I participated, the Holy Fire made its way to Tennessee and then to Birmingham, Alabama, where Orthodox friends of mine celebrated the liturgy of its arrival. After the candles are lit, the pilgrims who have traveled here together bless each other with hugs and Christ is risen cheers. For safety, the candles are blown out and people filter outside of the church with joy. The Oriental Orthodox churches remain and process around the tomb and then make their way to their own churches for their services. The Armenians to the Church of St. James. The Greek and Russian Orthodox remain in the Catholicon of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher for a service immediately following the Holy Fire ceremony. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching it, head on over to JesusAcademy.com where you'll find more in-depth and curated content on the Tomb of Christ and the Miracle of Holy Fire.